Hey folks, Quill18 here. Several of my viewers asked for a quick tutorial on how to play Fish Tank Commander. So this is what this is, and we're going to look into uh, how to get a game started, how to play your turn, and how to win, how to beat those noobs. So the first thing you're going to have to do, if you haven't done it already, you do have to sign up for the website. You, you have to create a, a login. Um, don't worry, we only use that to send you tons and tons of advertising and spam. No, no, no. We're going to, right now it's just your login. At some point we're going to add an option that uh, we will notify you by email email uh, when a turn is up uh, for you, but uh, that'll be an option that you can turn on and off in your settings. Um, so that's all. So once you've got an account like I do here, what you can do is uh, you might want to peruse the maps. For example, if we look at the map list, you can actually see uh, all the maps and they will be sorted by score. This is not going to be quite up to date here because I'm actually working on my internal server. Um, but uh, we can see here that Clash of the Fish is rated quite highly. Let's take a look at that. Well, that looks like a pretty interesting looking map. Uh, these uh, these two maps by uh, Demonac are really quite good. The uh, Pro Map and Pro Map 3. I think I'm a fan of... I actually really like the just the original pro map it's a fairly small map but i like small maps because the the gameplay is is kind of it's a little bit more i don't chess like i mean the thing is an actual chess board is only eight by eight it's not a very big board um and anyway i really like the gameplay uh sort of created by that but he's also got a somewhat larger map here which is uh which is possibly in my opinion one of the best maps in the map pool so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start a game on this on pro map three so to do that we're just going to go up here and hit play a game and uh, it does show me a list of all the games that I'm currently a part of, including all the ones where it's waiting for me to play a turn. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and start a new game, because obviously I'm not playing enough games at once, so I'm going to do that. Now, right now, the matchmaking uh, system is pretty simple. In fact, it still says dummy placeholder for matchmaking. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time. This, this website was created in 48 hours as part of a Ludumdari competition. Um, 48 hours two days to make an entire game and so not everything is the way that I want yet but I have a huge to-do list that I'm going to be working on soon including things like a very sophisticated matchmaking system so what we're going to do is we're just going to find the map that we want and um, was it pro map oh, this isn't even alphabetical pro map 2 pro map number 3 is what we want and I want to challenge someone named other guy because that is my account, which I have just created over here, so that I can have a game going back and forth against other guy. So, it, uh, it creates a copy of the map for you. Uh, you can see over here, I am on the red team. Uh, the person, right now, the person who initiates the challenge will always be on the red team uh, and gets to act first. So you've got the advantage if you go out and challenge some people. Um, and if you just sit back passively, then other people are going to get an edge on you. So we have, the way you play the game is it's turn based, you each take turns. I make my moves, then I end my turn, and my opponent makes his moves, and then once he ends his turn, it comes back to me. I'll be notified of that at the time, actually. So um, you can see my statistics here. Uh, that I've got 55 fish food available. So the fish food is, is the money, is the currency for this game. It's what you use to, to create or build units, uh, which are fish. You, get, you start the game with 50 fish food, and you get five every turn from every castle you control. And you can see here in the middle of the map, I control one red castle. There are a bunch of neutral castles on this particular map. Um, other map features, you can see there are logs, and you can see if I mouse over, over on the left-hand side here, you'll see a little pop describing the tile. And logs block all movement. Movement is not allowed there. Um, this is just open water. You can see the sandy bottom of the aquarium because that's where we're playing. And the movement cost here is just one. The weeds cost two movement. The bubbles are special. They only cost one movement, but only turtles can go through bubbles. All other units are blocked from the bubbles completely. So um, that, that offers a lot, of, a lot of decisions to make in terms of movement. And we'll look at the units very briefly. Um, winning and losing. The way you lose is if you have no more castles. And the way you take over a castle is if you end a turn with a unit on a castle, if it's an enemy castle and you end a, your turn with a unit on there, it will turn neutral. And then if you end your turn with a unit on a neutral castle, it'll flip to your side completely. So the way to win is to eliminate all of your opponent's castles. Um, but in the meantime, the more neutral castles you 
flip to your side, the more income you'll get every turn. Um, so it really helps out your economy. So you've, you want to you want to sort of balance some of your aggression with some of your economy. And again, down the road, we're going to make a lot of changes to that sort of balance. Uh, right now, it's a little simplistic, but I, I'm surprised there's quite a bit of depth. We have four, only four unit types, but virtually every game I've seen played uses all four unit types in, in a variety of different mixes. So I'm quite happy about that. Another caveat, when you build units, you can only build them in the squares around your castle, including the castle itself. So theoretically, you've got nine squares, all the squares around, and then the castle in the middle to build your units on. But you can't build them on logs, and also if there happens to be bubbles, uh, you can only build turtles on bubbles, because only they can enter those squares. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, and I'm going to build, let's take a look at the map really quickly here see what kind of objects I might grab. This castle here might be pretty easy to grab. It's all open water on the way. Um, and it's uh, one, two, three, four tiles away, which means if I use a seahorse, if you look at the seahorse here, the seahorse is a speed of four. It's by far the fastest unit in the game. Turtles only have a speed of one. They move quite slowly, but they can move through bubbles. They're also a bit more armored. Um, then finally we've got the beta fish. The betas are known as Japanese fighting fish, so we decided to make them the really aggressive ones. And they do double the damage of all the other unit types. And then finally you have the lowly goldfish, which isn't particularly special in any way, but he's cheap, only costing six fish food, whereas uh, the seahorse and the beta both cost 10 and the turtle actually cost 12. Um, expect to see all these numbers change dramatically in the future, especially as we add more units and tweak the gameplay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my seahorse. You can see it's got a green board around it to show that it's selected. And I'm going to drop it right here. Now, you may have seen a quick little flash there. Um, and, and that flash may be a little longer if you play on the server because as you click, it sends that information to the server, and then the server will respond back and say, okay, this is a legal placement right now. And this is all kept track of in real time. Your opponent, if you wanted to, could refresh the page at this point and actually see the current status of the game um, and get an up to, up to the minute sort of update on it. And we're going to make that a little bit more responsive as we go forward using a few more advanced sort of web programming techniques. But again, time was really of the essence. So um, that's that. Let's see, what else are we going to build? Um, well, depends. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be playing both sides. This player is going to be all about building a lot of seahorses for speed, and then trying to grab as many of these castles as possible and get an economic edge early on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be kind of boring and just place down um, four seahorses. And you know what? That's all the broom for units, even though I have some money left over. Uh, yeah, 15 fish food left over. I don't actually have any more room to place down units, so that's all I can do. So I'm going to end my turn. Now what I'm going to do is flip to my second window over here where I am logged in as other guy. And if I refresh this page, there we go. It's going to tell me, it's going to show that I've got a notification. Now, this automatically checks for updates every 30 seconds for you. You don't have to reload the page constantly to see if you've got a message. If I had just waited here patiently, um, then this would have automatically popped up at some point to let me know, oh, I've got a turn waiting for me. And of course, it'll keep you updated on any games you might have waiting. So I'm going to click on this and see what's what. Ah. It's a new message, it's my turn in my game against Quill18. We're gonna add some more details to this page at some point going forward, but for now we're just gonna click here. And voila, okay, so I've been challenged. Here's the map, it's currently my turn. I can see that uh, my opponent, Quill18, has placed a bunch of seahorses here. Uh, one thing to mention is uh, when I was playing as the red player, I could build these units, but I couldn't move them. You can't move units on the first turn that they are summoned. Um, and this little shield here, this shield is red to show that the unit belongs to the red team, and the zero inside of it says you have zero movement left. Now, this player here, I'm going to play kind of a different strategy. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to grab castles where I can, sure, but I'm going to try to play a little bit more aggressively, and I'm, I'm going to focus on applying pressure right on my enemy's base right away. So I'm going to employ a completely different strategy. Um, I'm going to see if I can't get a unit around to the north here. Now, there are a couple of bubble spots here. It, the bubbles are really pale, um, and it might be a little hard to see in this video. Hopefully not. Also, if the bubbles aren't animating for you, it's because you're not in Chrome, and I didn't do quite enough testing. I tested most things in Firefox and Internet Explorer, and the game should work everywhere, but the animations don't work outside of Chrome, so my bad there. Anyway, so I'm going to place a turtle right over here. It's adjacent to my castle. And you can see this, this turtle has a blue shield. 
and um, because the turtle's going to be able to walk very slowly through these bubbles and capture this castle, and then he's also going to be quite tanky and maybe be able to fight these guys on the other side. Um, and I think I just realized, I think if the turtle is sitting in bubbles, you can't attack him? I'm actually not sure about this myself. That's going to be interesting. We're going to see, we're going to find out if that is true or not. So I've done that, and that's good. And um, other than that, I mean, we start so close to our opponent, but it's such a long way around to get to him. Still, I see that he's building a lot of seahorses, which means he's probably going to try to capture a lot of things. Um, and really, my response is either to play as economically as, as he does, or maybe play more aggressively. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build um, a couple of betas um, here and here to try to loop around the bottom. I'm going to take these castles along the way, but then I'm going to start attacking him from the front. Um, and actually, I am going to build one seahorse for variety. Poor goldfish doesn't get a lot of love early on, at least not from me. And he's going to come and grab this castle. Now I'm going to end my turn, and that's all there is to it. Now I can still see this map. I, can, uh, I can't click on any units. One thing that's, that's noteworthy um, is that, if I just pull this down a little bit over here, um, and you can see I'm just running on my, my local installation um, just for this video. But this address, if you take this address and you copy it and paste it and send it to someone else, they can come and take a look at your game anytime they want. Um, there's going to be a share button to make that a little easier going forward, but you can do that. The other thing that's possible is if you go into the uh, play a game screen, is you can click a button to show everyone's games. Now, right now, that's going to be a huge list. Um, we're going to add some pagination later on. I keep saying we because um, a lot of my uh, viewers have really jumped onto this game and have come to me with a lot of great suggestions, plus a lot of uh, debugging. Um, so it's going to turn into quite a bit of a community project going forward. Uh, even though I was the original programmer, we're going to see what we can do to, uh, to spread the love around. Anyway, um, so other people can come and click show everyone's game and then uh, they can find you in that list just by, you know, looking for, for your name in the list. But we're gonna, there's going to be a lot of those sorts of additions. So if I flip back to my other window, my Quill 18 window, uh, I'm still here. You can see it's automatically detected a new notification. So I'm going to click here and go to game versus other guy because it's now my turn. And now you can see that things have changed. My seahorses here have four movement available to them. So I can start moving them around at this point. Now, one thing is if ever you have built some units, so you've clicked, you know, you've clicked on the turtle here to try to, well, you know what, I'm going to give you a real example. I'm going to take this seahorse. I'm going to move him south to this castle. So I'm just going to click on the squares one at a time and get him down here. And he's going to end his turn on that neutral castle, and he'll be able to capture it at the end of this turn. Now, that's freed up one tile right here that I'm going to use. I'm going to bring in a turtle, and I'm going to try to do the whole run a turtle through the bubbles here to capture this castle and see how that's like. So I'm going to place him here. Now, I can't move him right now. He's got a speed of zero. Um, and what does this mean? If I click and it's saying blocked by unit, the reason is I'm still in build mode. And while I, and it's I'm trying to place another turtle here or here, or something like that. That's what's going on. Ideally, if you click on a friendly unit, it should instantly move you back into move mode or select mode, which is where I am now. Uh, and unfortunately, very small little bug, just to let you know that if you get that pop-up, that's why. Um, so now I can start moving these units again. So I'm going to um, I'm going to come around here and grab this castle. So moving through the weeds would cost me two. So I can. this would be one, two, three, four, so I can get there, that's fine. I could also have gone around one, two, three, four, works out exactly the same. So I'll go through there, you can see it's dropped me from a four to a two, but then again, I'll be able to grab that castle, no problem. And my other units, um, this one is gonna come down this way, and there's no way for me to get this castle this turn right now, which is kind of unfortunate. So I'm just gonna end it in the weeds, I can't move, you can see I'm out of movement. Not the most elegant messaging, but you know, 48 hours, it's not very long. And I'm going to continue my idea of just trying to be as economical as possible and come this way. And I'm going to grab the corner castle. And that's all the moves I can make. I do have eight fish food left over, oops, um, which does give me enough to summon a goldfish, which only costs six. But I'm going to hold off. I'm going to save my money. There's no reason not to. Now I'm going to go end turn. And I'm going to change windows back over to 
this guy and now we are going to I'm just gonna manually check my notifications I do indeed have a new one one thing is when you click this link for the game it should automatically delete the notification it doesn't right now it's an improvement for the future and I'll show you where you can go actually if you scroll down to the bottom of the page and you click on please report any issues here it'll bring you to the github page for this project where you can report bugs or request improvements and features that you want to see going forward even things like balance change like oh the the turtles aren't powerful enough please increase their armor or their hit points or something that's where you would put it there um, and people can leave comments and, and have discussions so I am back over here playing as team blue so now, um, well, I've got to move my units, so let me scooch that turtle forward. And you know what? I'm going to be totally aggressive because I want to see some combat. I'm just going to try to move my seahorse the long way around. We're going to try to engage in some battles over this way, and I'm going to move here. One interesting thing with the beta, you'll see, so I'm going to move him. He's going to go from a 2 to a 1, and even though weeds have a movement cost of 2, I can still enter the weeds this turn. To enter it would cost me two, but as long as I have at least one, you can always enter weeds in the current system. Now, that balance might change later on, but that's the way it is for now. Um, again, I'm going to save my money here. I'm going to go to end turn, and I'm just going to reload the page over here for speed, and now I'm going to take red's turn. It's going to be a little more confusing this way because I'm playing both sides. Usually, you actually got several minutes while you know the other player might be pondering the move or might not be aware of this notifications yet. Um, so I've captured some castles now, so my income this turn was bigger. I gained 15 fish food instead of just 5. So now I can move this guy over here. And now I have a choice. I have one movement left. I can jump onto this castle, and then I'd be able to hit end turn, and then I would claim the castle and get the income next turn. But that would leave this seahorse free to attack me. I have a tough choice to make. Do I want to claim the castle and the income, or do I want to try to get in some damage? So I'm going to try to attack him just to show what that's like. It's not very impressive, but it's there. Now, if I mouse over the seahorses, you can see the stats. Seahorses have eight hit points as a maximum, and everyone's at full health right now. That's what the green bar is. That's their health bar. Um, the seahorses also have an attack rating of five. You don't need to know the math behind the attacks necessarily, um, but five, it works out that five is effectively the average damage. It can do, it can, it'll do a range around there. Sometimes it'll do less, sometimes it'll do more, but the average will be around five. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to attack this other seahorse, who of course has the same stats as I do. We have no defenses, um, whereas turtles would have two points of defense, which just decreases the damage they take by two every time. So I'm going to do an attack. And you can see the seahorse, ooh, that's going to be really hard to see in the video, I bet, with the yellow line right here. But we've brought the seahorse down to a little under half. And if you're below sort of 60% of your hit points, the health bars will turn yellow. If ever you're below 30% of your hit points, the health bar will turn red. That's really bad. And of course, it shrinks every time as well. So that's what we're going to do there. I'm going to move this turtle into the, um, into the bubbles. I'm going to go and one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm just going to go sit on this castle, which is not a very good use of the seahorse's movements. And then I'm going to go way down here and claim this castle. And over here, I can go here, here, and there, and end that. And now that I've owned more castles, I can actually summon more stuff. For example, over here, I could defensively plop down a turtle to block this guy. Um, I could even put it down on the bubbles, but I won't do that. I'm going to put him on the castle itself. That way, if he moves forward to the bubbles, I'm going to get the first attack on him. Right? Smart. I could summon some more, but I think that's that's an... Oh, actually, I might want to summon something over here. Again, I have the economic advantage in this game. And one thing that's very true right now is the player who goes first, which is the red player, has a pretty significant advantage in this game. Then one of the next changes, when we introduce the matchmaking system um, and, and better rankings and all that, one thing that's going to happen is when you get paired against someone, you're actually going to play two games with them on the same map. One where you're playing as red and one where you're playing as blue. And you play them both. And then uh, if there's a tie, if, 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 someone, if one person wins on one map and the other person wins on the other map, then it's going to be based on how many turns did it take to win uh, to determine the ultimate winner of the match. Um, that way it's totally fair. It doesn't matter. And then because some maps don't even have um, a, a symmetrical start. Some maps you might have one guy starts with three castles, the, only guy, the other guy only starts with one. And so the guy with one is guaranteed to lose. But if you're playing both, then the advantage is going to balance out. And then it's about how good are you at attacking on one map and how good are you at defending in the other role. And hopefully you'll win 
faster than the other guy will win on the other map. Strategic stuff like that. Anyway, um, you know, this actually shows off most of the gameplay right now uh, pretty well. I'm going to end my turn over here. And then if I switch over to my other window again, and you know, I can check my notifications. I've got a new turn. I'm going to go in here. At this point, I'm looking at the situation. I realize, ah, oh, I've played this terribly. I'm never going to win on this map. I think I need to just surrender. And you can play it out to the, the bitter end. There's no, there's no penalty to doing so. But sometimes you just want to say, oh, I'm done. I'm through. And so I'm going to hit the surrender button. It's going to check. Are you sure you want to give up? I'm going to say yes. OK, I do. The page will reload itself after a moment. There we go. Oh, the page doesn't reload itself. Right, it brings you back to your game listing. Um, but this is the game we just played, and it says, oh, the winner was Quill18. I can still bring this up. The play button should eventually have a different text there. And I bring it up. I can't make any more moves. It does say that Team Red was the winner. But you can this. there's a record of this map that's always kept, so you can always see what the status is. And that's pretty fun. And let's take a look really quickly um, at the, uh, the leaderboards, which we probably won't be on. No, oh, Quill18 is over here. So there's two leaderboards. ELO rating is the uh, the ranking system that is even used in chess to determine who, what what the relative player skill is. And this is going to be used later on when we have proper matchmaking, um, so that you're getting paired against people of your skill level all the time. Of course, you're always free to to directly challenge someone on a different skill level. Um, if you want to play a friend, or you just like, oh, this guy's got tons of points, but I bet you I can take him. You can do that. Um, but when we get the actual matchmaking put in there, it's going to pair you up against people of your skill level who are also active. It's going to take a look at um, when the last time someone logged into the site to make sure that they're still playing. They're not just, you know, they didn't create an account a year ago and then leave. Um, so lots of improvements coming that way. But that's how you play that game. And the final feature to show you, actually, is how to create a map. You go to the View Create Map screen. Again, you can look at all the maps here. You can also, if you look at a map, you can also vote on it. That's what these arrows are. Uh, they also show up in the game and you can vote a map down. You can say, oh, this map is garbage. I don't like it. Or you can say, yeah, this map is great. I love it. Or if you're if you voted and you've decided, oh, I'm not really sure which way to go, you can just click the arrow one more time. It toggles it off and there you have it. But I like this map a lot, so I'm going to vote it up. And that affects its uh, ratings over here. Um, so right, that was that screen. But if you want to create your own map, you can do that by clicking on the Create a Map button. You get to this horrible unstyled form, which you could really use some loving. I'm going to call it uh, My Awesome Map. Lots of exclamation marks. I can put in the description if I want. Um, and then you need you do need to specify a size for it. It should tell you on this screen it doesn't. But let's say you tried to make a map that was like 100 by 100, the biggest map ever. And you try to create that. It does let you know that there's a size restriction. In fact, there's a minimum size of 5 and a maximum size of 20. Um, let's just make it a 10 by 10 map. Because Or you know what? The, the chess analogy. Let's go 8 by 8, just like a chessboard. Create map. Now it should go through. Indeed, it does. And it should bring you right to the edit screen. But you know, 48 hours. Click Edit here. And now you're in actual edit mode for the map, in which case you can place things down. You can say, well, this is the chessboard like. So let's say, um, you know, it's like the king and the queen over, or not, the, or the two kings. Um, and actually, just to make it interesting, we're going to put two neutral castles over on the sides. And then, uh, ooh, how are we going to do this? You know, let's, um, oh, let's, let's put a little barrier here with logs. Or you know what? Instead of logs, I want bubbles. Excellent. That's great. We'll do something like that, and then we'll put um, we'll put a nice set of weeds. We'll put a four by four thing of weeds to slow the movement through the middle because we're annoying that way. And then we'll do something like this on the diagonals. Great, that looks good. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna put a couple of logs in here as well. Uh, maybe just right in front of your castle, just to help give it a little bit of protection like that. That is our awesome map. We're gonna save changes. And of course, we're going to vote up our map because our map is awesome. In fact, when you create a map, it should automatically put an upvote from you. That would make a lot of sense. I'm going to see about doing that going forward. And then we have a map. And then we can start a game on my awesome map. There you have it. That is the full runaround. Uh, everything up up here, we looked at the leaderboard. We looked at the uh, notifications. There is account settings uh, where you can change your email address and your nickname. So you are known by your nickname over here throughout the site. Um, and, but you do use the email address when you log in. Some people ask, why can't you log in with your nickname? The reason is you can change your nickname whenever you want, and the nicknames aren't actually 
unique. I'm not entirely sure if that's true, actually, so don't take my word for it. Email notifications when they are, apparently I, oh, email my notifications when they are one, year, one hour old as a default. This doesn't do anything yet, but going forward, if you get a not notification and you haven't looked at it and it's been over an hour, then you'd get an email saying with a, with a list of all your notifications that you know, hey, pay attention. You're you know you've been challenged in two games and uh, this other game that you were in, your you, your opponent surrendered, something like that. I know you can turn these off if you don't want any of those, or you can slow it down. Just give me one email a day, or I want to know really really quite frequently. So every 15 minutes, just bang bang bang, send me those emails. You can also change your password, and you can cancel your account here if you really aren't happy. In which case, it'll delete all your information, all your personal information that we've collected, like your your uh, fingerprints from from clicking on your keyboard. Yeah, we collect all that stuff. It's pretty awesome. Um, and that's it. That's the game. It you can find it at fishtankcommander.com. And uh, if you are part of Let Them Dare, make sure to vote on my game, please. Be generous. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you folks next time.